Hello F Sharp. Welcome back to our intro to F Sharp series. Today we are talking about loops. Loops. I can't believe we've gone this far and not talk not talked about loops yet, which is kind of crazy to think about, but loops are interesting in F Sharp because they're there, they're very useful. Um but you don't always need them. And that's because we have the the kind of looping higher order functions in the modules for the types. And we're going to get back to those more uh, things like iter and map. But I want to show you how to do loops in F sharp because if you're coming to F sharp from another language, that's probably what one of the first things you're like, Oh my goodness. Like how do I do loops in this language? I need to know how to do loops. Um, but you'll find actually a lot of the time that you don't need them. I still use them, obviously, but it's it's not something you necessarily need to reach for as much as you might think in F sharp. So I I'm showing them to you for completeness so that you know what they look like and how to use them. But um, I think the more F sharp you write, the less you end up writing them. So have keep that in mind. And we had to cover arrays last time because I wanted to use them in this section. So I'm going to create my array of values, select values equal to, and I'm going to use an array comprehension to create 10, an array of 10 values. And what an array comprehension is, we will spend a whole lot more time on, but we need to talk about loops first. <laughs> and so, when I did this, I got this output here where it says like, hey, values is this integer array and it's the values one through 10. Great. Now, let's say I wanted to loop over these values and do something with them. So let's like do the most simple thing. So for V in values do, and this is, you know, how you do a loop in F sharp. So I'm going to say print function. And I'm going to use some string interpolation here. And again, we'll talk more about print function stuff later. I just want to show you some stuff real quick. But if, if you're like, Matthew, what is this? Like, don't worry. We're going to spend a whole section just talking about uh, the print function and string interpolation, just not yet. But all this is doing is it's printing out the value that is in V. So if I go ahead and run this, what it does, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can move this panel to the right, give myself some room. Come on. So what it's doing is just printing out the values one through 10. Great. So the for loop, the humble for loop. So this, the closest equivalent in C sharp is the for each loop. And there are some interesting nuances here that I'm going to come back to <laughs> later because they have to do with performance. But if you're coming from C sharp, think of this as your for each version. So for V in values do print function. So this will, this kind of construct will work with any I enumerable. We also have the ability to use an expression to uh, generate the values. And so we could say like, Hey, for I in one and then dot, dot values dot length minus one do. And I'm going to start running out of space. Oh, come on. Give me a little. Oh, really? You're going to be like that? Cool. Fine. We'll zoom out. So now what we're doing is we're saying like, hey, for I, so this is this what I'm iterating. And I'm going to generate a sequence of values, of integer values from one to values.length minus one. And so here we're going to say print function. Again, I'm going to use that string interpolation. And now I'm going to say values and I'm going to index into it. Say like, hey, index into the array of values and give me the ith element. And so this is just going from values. Oh, whoa, whoa, zero. Yikes. Oh man, this is not MATLAB. What are we doing? So from zero to length minus one, I wanted those integers and I'm going to do something with it. So again, so again, printing out one through 10. But this is still a for each loop. That's kind of how you should be thinking about it right now. So still think of this as kind of like a for each loop. Like, and I, what I've done here is I've I've defined an expression for generating the set of values that I want I to take on. 
that is what I've done here. Now, for what a for loop would look like in F sharp. So for I equal to, oh, I want to show you one more thing. <laughs> Gonna hold you up a little bit. <laughs> so one of the cool things that we can do here is saying like, hey, this is gonna generate all the values from zero to length minus one. What if I wanna skip some values? So for I in zero dot dot by two values dot length minus one do. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that line. Oh, come on, come on, okay. So now when I do this, I get one, three, five, seven, nine. So I can give it a stride, like, hey, how much do I want you to jump by when you do this? I could also, okay, I'm going a little off script now. I haven't tried this yet, so I'm gonna, I, uh, but something tells me this might work. Minus one, minus, minus two down to zero do. Oh man, it's getting crazy. Boom. So here I am saying the value I want you to start with and what I want you to increment by and when do I want you to terminate. So I can start low, give it a positive increment and go high, or I can start high, give it a negative incre increment and go down. What happens? If I did something like this, for i in zero minus one values dot length minus one do. Oh, I gotta put second here. What would this do? Do we wanna find out? Nothing. <laughs> Psych. Sorry. <laughs> um F sharp smart enough to say like, okay, I'm going to start at zero. Uh, I'm going to go by negative one and I'm going to go down to this value. Oh snap. I'm already there. <laughs> so, um, that you would think would be a great way to shoot your foot off. But, uh, no, F sharp, fortunately evaluates this and is like, no, what, what? That makes no sense. This makes no sense. And just for completeness, let's, let's, um, let's take this one here and do something silly. So like, Hey, I'm going to start at length minus one. I'm going to go by positive twos to zero. What does that do? Again, nothing. So, yay, F sharp protecting ourselves, protecting us from ourselves. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, okay, cool. A little bit of protection there. What happens when we want to take the safeties off? <laughs> Let's take the safeties off. So, this is, so if you're going to do a, 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 for a loop in F sharp, this is probably the one you want to use. I'll show you the other ones uh, just again so you have completeness. And if there's ever a tickle in your mind like, oh, I need this other thing. How do I do that? Oh, I remember watching that video that Matthew did. And he said like, hey, I probably wouldn't need this. But when you need it, you know you need it. So everything you've seen before this, I would say is, is a for each like loop in C sharp. It's not quite a for each. And I'll go into why at the end. But. That is the conceptual model if you're coming from C-sharp that you should be thinking. Let's talk about a proper for loop. For I equal zero to values dot length minus one do. So now this is different. Notice the syntax is very different. Saying, hey, I equal to, and what you're saying is saying, hey, this is the initial value of I, and this is I what I want you to go to at the end. So this is what I would call like a proper for loop in C sharp. And again, I'm gonna use that same logic here. Have it run, boom, one through 10. And you can also go in the reverse direction. So from here, we were going zero up to the length minus one. What if we wanted to go for i equal to values dot length minus one down to zero do. So this is this is an important difference. So the, here, when you're going from low to high, you use two. When you're going from high to low, you use down two and say, hey, print function, what am I doing? All right. What, why are you, why are you complaining? 
equal to values dot length minus one. Oh, do we have to put this in parents? Huh? Not a function, cannot be applied. Or values. What? what am I doing wrong? What am I, what did I miss? What did I miss? Because I have it over here. Why is this one not working? I'm kind of curious now. I don't know. That was strange. I don't know what's going on there. So values at length. So this is me going from high and then going down and I'm just going by uh, integer values. Now there is yet another construct and it is the while loop. And I'm going to have to use a mutable value in here to do this, even though I haven't really introduced the idea of mutability yet. So just kind of bear with me. I'm just going to use it because you're probably not going to be using while loops. I just want you to see that they are there in F sharp. So mutable I equals zero. And by using the mutable keyword, I'm telling you F sharp, Hey, I can change the value of I if I want to. All this, but I'm, I'm showing you this for completing this. Please do not reach for this uh, immediately. You probably don't need it, but it's there. So values dot length minus one do. And again, I'm using that same logic print function. And I'm going to say, I don't know why I'm writing this out again. I'm just going to copy this home print delete and super important increment that thing. <laughs> if you don't do this, your loop will run for a while. And so when I do that again, I print out one through nine. So that is a really quick whirlwind tour of the kind of different basic loops in F sharp. Again, most of the time you wouldn't use them. What you would normally do if you wanted to do something like this is you would use the array dot iter function. So I had values. And what I would do is I would pipe that into array dot iter and iter is a higher order function. And it takes another function as its first parameter. And we're going to say funged, uh, L use V to be consistent. And I'm going to say, Hey, print function. And then I'm going to say, print out that value of V. This would be the more F Sharpie way of doing this using the either function. Now there are certain situations where you, this doesn't work and you have to use one of these for loops. And it specifically has to do when you're working with by ref values, uh, by ref types, these lambdas can't capture that. These are details you're not going to worry about. We'll cover it in advanced stuff. Don't worry about it. Okay. I mentioned here at the beginning that this is an, is a for each like thing. And it works with this kind of construct works with any I enumerable. Wait, no, 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 no. Sorry. This, this, so for V and values do, this is the for each like loop. Here's something really important to know though. The F sharp compiler is not the Roslyn compiler. What do I mean by that? When you read a lot of literature on writing high performance.net, it is almost exclusively written from the perspective of C sharp, which is fine. This is not a problem, but it's also a reason that I have a channel. <laughs> Because the recommendations for C sharp do not necessarily translate to F sharp. And that's because the F sharp compiler really understands F sharp. It's very clever and it is aware of very common scenarios. If you, and, and there's, there's a specific book that I'm thinking about that talks about loops in for each a for each loop versus a for loop and saying, Hey, for loops are faster. But here's the thing though. And so it would suggest that this would be a faster loop 
because this is just a for loop and so there's less overhead because it's not using the I enumerable. Here's the thing though, F sharp knows that this is an array. And so it's not going to use the I enumerable interface for iterating through the values. It has very special logic to deal with this scenario in particular, saying like, oh, you are doing a for loop, a for each loop over an array. I know how to really optimize that. So the takeaway when you're wanting to write really fast F sharp is just write the idiomatic F sharp. And guess what? This ends up being just as fast as this again, because through the magic of inlining all the, the fact that you're using a Lambda here disappears. So the, the takeaway from this is that, yeah, there are, there are for loops in F sharp and you will deal with certain scenarios where you need to use a for loop. Fantastic. But don't make the leap that, Oh, for loops are going to be faster because they're less abstract than using things like array.iter or using this for each loop equivalent. That's not the case because the F sharp compiler knows about many of these very common scenarios and will optimize for them. Like I was tearing my, my hair out one time. We're like, why is this not faster than this? And then I finally got to the answer. I think Chet was the one that like clued me into where it was the compiler. I was like, oh yeah, it has special optimizations for this. I'm like, what? The? <laughs> so learn from my mistakes. Write the idiomatic F sharp. Write the simple, straightforward solution for it. And then when benchmarking and profiling show, hey, this is what's slow, then you can go back and start trying to do something exotic or do something special or do something more low level. But don't assume that the compiler won't already do that for you because it might. And you would have spent a bunch of time writing more brittle code that would have been elided in from the get go. So I hope this was helpful. You are now aware of the different really common loops in F sharp. And if you need to use them, they're there for you to use, but I'm telling you a lot of the time you don't need them, but you have a wonderful day. I hope this introduction was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions about, um, pieces of F sharp that are causing you trouble, please let me know. I love to hear that. And that lets me know what I need to integrate later into the series and go back and cover in more detail. So thank you very much. And you have a wonderful day.